everyone. Welcome back to Las Vegas. Lisa Martin and Dave Vellante here with you all day covering Click World 23 live from Mandalay Bay. We love talking with customers. We're going to have a great conversation next. It's making me kind of hungry because Pizza Express is here. And if you've ever had their pizza, which I have in the UK, it's pretty darn good. Please welcome <laughs> from Click, Brendan Grady, the VP and General Manager, Click Cloud, and Dan Williams, Business Intelligence Manager at Pizza Express. Guys, it's great to have you on the program. Hey guys, thanks for thank having you. us. So Appreciate I've been, it. I've been pleasure, I've had the pleasure of dining at Pizza Express a number right. of times and all the times I've been to the UK. Thanks, but yeah. Dan, tell viewers a little bit about the chain and also, here we are at ClickWorld. Some of the challenges the business was having with respect to access to real-time data. Um, so, uh, Pizza Express was created in 1965, so we've been around a very long time. Um, predominantly in the UK and the Republic of Ireland, um, about, about almost 400 restaurants. So, we're a small country, but we, we jam in the restaurants. <laughs> um, I guess historically, we've been similar to other businesses where we have lots of data kind of flying around in Excel files. Um, we needed a kind of better solution for data governance, for data accessibility, security. Um, so, kind of we, we evaluated tools, we chose Click, and um, by migrating to kind of Click Cloud, we've been able to go provide really robust data sources to our restaurant managers, and it kind of, we actually kind of furnished them with real-time data, uh, and they kind of, so they're able to kind of up, to upsell and everything on demand, which is really powerful for that them. On demand is key, right? Yeah. For all the hungry consumers out there. And for a small exactly. island, it's really packed with pizza. Yeah. But talk a little bit about the journey with Click. You guys started in 2018, you expanded in 2021, I believe. Yep. Talk to us a little bit about why Click, because obviously there's a lot of choice out there. Why Click and, and the journey that you've been on? Um, so why Click, I guess, we evaluated a few other tools. We looked at the, the Gartner Magic Quadrant, obviously the big three, Click, Power BI, and Tableau. Um, what we found is when we evaluated it, we wanted to democratize building dashboards as much as possible at the time. And we found that Click really offered the, the best way of doing that. That was kind of our perception of it. Um, we also found that we had a really great partner involved, which are, are Metis in the UK. And um, so that's kind of way why we went, went with Click. Um, initially, we kind of treated it almost like a proof of concept for kind of 40 users to start with, mm -hmm. um, which are kind of our area managers of our restaurants. Um, and then we, that was really successful for around 18 months. COVID hits, um, and as a result, the business kind of wanted more data, wanted more accessibility for restaurant managers, um, and then migrating to, to Click Cloud made the most sense for that, because it just allowed us to, to have a really robust uh, architecture behind the scenes as well, so it just yeah, made complete sense. Brendan, what was your cloud journey? Because when you roll back to the sort of early days of the modern viz, right, you had a situation where you, you guys were disrupting you're know, building cubes, it would take forever, it would take a month to get what you wanted. By the time you got the data, it was just so slow and outdated. But then you guys embarked on your own cloud journey, mm -hmm. as a, largely as a private company. Yeah, so I've, I've actually been at Click for about three and a half years, right? It would be four years this summer, and um, I was hired to actually build the cloud business from ground up, so it was basically nothing when I arrived. And what we saw happening was a lot of our longtime customers, like Pizza Express and others were saying, you know, we need to be in the cloud, right? Everybody is moving into the cloud. What accelerated it for us, like every other cloud vendor out there, was COVID, right? The pandemic really, really hit, and all of those customers that were trying to manage th things on-prem just said, look, we need to get there, we need to get there now, we need to get there yesterday, in fact. So, it's been a bit of a journey between um, August of uh, 2019 and now we're in 2023. Feels like I've been here for a month but it's been four years already because the, the, the market's moving that fast. A lot of acceleration. Double click, Brendan, on Click Cloud. That's something I, I would challenge anyone to say five times fast. Probably can't do it. But in terms of, of Dan, you brought it up, and it was really the natural progression of the Pizza Express deployment. Talk about Click Cloud as really coming in and saving the day for Pizza Express and, and really driving their business forward and solidifying that cloud journey. Yeah, and we'll tag team on this, I think, right? right? I mean, I think, you know, when Dan and I were talking about this, I come back to the pandemic, right? I mean, it really, the hospitality industry in every country across the world, they got hit pretty much the hardest, whether you're an airline or a hotel, yeah. whether you're a restaurant, whatever it may be. Um, for, for us, it was companies like Pizza Express would just say, look, we're, we're hurting, and we're going to need to do this in an economical way, we're going to need to provide more access to information uh, to people across our company, and we can't manage the infrastructure. We just can't do that anymore. We don't have the people, we don't have the time. Frankly, we don't have the money. 
right? It really came down to that, and I think for you, it really sort of a, from what I recall, it was that timing that really accelerated it for you. Absolutely, yeah, that was the big enabler. So we, we wanted to get uh, data to restaurant managers, but I kind of thought it was a little bit of a nice to have at the time, yes. but COVID just kind of completely changed the game with that. So as we had to kind of keep an eye on our labor, our wastage, in like a much greater lens. So yep. yeah, it was, it, well, that so, was the fact. Yeah. So you weren't, I mean some restaurants were better prepared than others. It sounds like you had to, you had to force march to digital into the cloud. And how has your business, you know, exiting the isolation economy, how has the business shaped up? I mean, uh, like many companies say, well actually the digital business stayed pretty good, stayed maybe higher. The traditional business is sort of back to where it was. What did you guys see? Um, yeah, I think it's stabilized now. I think it's taken a bit of time. I think hospitality in the UK, I'm not sure if it's probably the same in the US, but in the UK it's, it's, it fluctuates a lot in terms of the, the how healthy, I guess, the, it, it is. Um, one interesting thing we've seen is just the spike in delivery, where that mm -hmm. was quite a re reasonably small part of the business. Um, now that's got a, quite a big percentage of our sales now. Uh, again, we thought that might kind of dip as, as we got through COVID, but it's, it has sustained. So um, I think we're better for it almost now, um, but it's kind of, it's taken a bit time to get there. And what's the delivery like in, in the UK? Is there like third party services that handle yeah. the delivery? You guys yeah, you haven't vertically integrated that, right? Delivery is not your core competency. No, it's not. We, we, used, we have those three big players in the UK to deliver Just Eat and Uber Eats. Um, there's no point doing our own thing no. when they, they yeah. already set up for it. So, yeah. You talked about one of the things I've been saying for years now is, is this one of the silver linings of COVID. Uh, and that is access to real time data before was nice to have. Yep. Now, table sticks. Yep because the, whoever's on the other end, whether it's a, a, you know, a hungry family or a business that needs catering, they want to be able to, to do that transaction like that, right now. I'd love to understand, Brendan, from your perspective, ClickCloud is a facilitator of that real time mm -hmm. because it's really something, like we said, it's, it's a necessity for businesses to thrive in this economy, which is quite dynamic. So there's, there's a, a thought that I, I like to talk about is, is I always say there's a cost of not knowing. Right in today's world, every consumer expects you to know them. Yeah. They know they know what they want, and more importantly, they want you to predict what they're going to want. Right, yeah. and for those companies that don't know that, they won't exist. Yeah. That's just the reality of the situation. And for companies like Pizza Express that really get that, if we look at that data, whether it's employee application data, whether it's a cross sell and upsell and merchandising. They realized, and what I really like about their story is they realized that there is a cost of not knowing, and if yeah. they don't embrace this, they won't thrive and they won't expand and they could shrink. And well, for a business you mentioned, you know, the, the launch of Pizza Express in 1965, the swinging 60s. For a business that's been around for, what, 58 years, to be able to modernize and, and thrive in such challenging times mm. is impressive. Talk a little bit about, Dan, the culture of, of, of analytics and data at Pizza Express. So I think it's a bit of a mixed bag. I think we're doing a lot better. I think some areas are more literate than others. And they're actually kind of looking at quite a, more of a data literacy program to improve that across the board because I think it is, it is a bit inconsistent. However, I guess compared, compared to a lot of our competitors, I think we're in really good shape again. I think it's so saturated with these kind of uh, companies in the UK. We have to stand out. And I think data really helps with that. So I think, again, there's work to do, but we're in a really good place. What's yeah. your IT look like today? <laughs> <laughs> How was that transformed? Because you, you said we got to be in the cloud. Would you, you put everything in the cloud? You still got obviously an IT team. Yeah, we, we have a strategy to move as much as we can into the cloud because um, we're quite a lean internal team. We rely on a lot of suppliers, mm -hmm. and we just kind of want to take away that headache that comes with infrastructure and security. So, what does it look like from a store, a, a restaurant perspective, from the store to the cloud? Walk us through that process, and and who are the main? Beneficiaries, I imagine store managers, but I imagine the customers that uh, benefit from the secret sauce too. Yeah, absolutely. I think I guess yeah, the primary would be the restaurant managers, but also mm -hmm. the staff below them. So they, I guess, the indirect benefits is they will also, uh, the waiters will also see the data because we as a, the uh, the dashboards are on a tablet and they share it around. Also, the chefs as well will be able to see that in terms of inventory and waste data. Um, so they are the, the the main beneficiaries, and we are launching and expanding into our, our head office as well. Um, um, so yeah, we and also and also international franchisees as well. We're really looking kind of to push this out, click out to as far as possible. So it's interesting for me. It's you hear a lot of people start their analytics journey by starting at the CEO down, 
Your journey's different. Mm. You started out with your store manager, so the people that would actually impact your profitability, actually impact your revenue growth, yeah. you started there down, and then you're moving into your, your central office. That is a fascinating and an amazingly smart approach. You put analytics in the hands of the people that are making decisions on a daily basis, it'll fundamentally change the way your company runs. And, your results are there, right? That was a conscious decision as well. We felt that um, they, those are the people that bring in the revenue. We need to facilitate them with as Completely. much as possible, and so they're always the, the, the uh, priority. So how, what was the adoption like for them? How'd you get them to adopt? What, what skills did they need? How did you sort of minimize that friction? Uh, so we want to make it as simple as possible for them to access Click. So um, again, the, the nice thing about Click Cloud is that we can use a like, single sign-on. It's just a, a URL that they can go to. Um, we then had lots of training materials. We, we um, held lots of meetings, lots of calls to talk them through, lots of drop-in sessions. Um, but also we started small. I guess there was, um, we, there was potential to kind of throw lots of data into Click. We thought, okay, keep a few sheets to start with and then we'll expand from there. Right. So Vernon, this is, you mentioned the, kind of the, the bottoms up approach here, which is unique, but also quite powerful. For those businesses that are clinging like this to on-prem and, and afraid of a cloud journey, what do you say to them? I got two daughters, all right? Love the movie <laughs> Frozen. Just let it go, right? That's all they have to do. <laughs> there is, th there's an opportunity for, for these companies out there in all yeah. seriousness that there are cost benefits, there are risk mitigation benefits, and then for those companies that are really embracing the cloud, and we were speaking about this the other day, by being in the cloud, Pizza Express and other customers and prospects will have access to the latest and greatest set of capabilities and products without ever having to think about it. And it will just be made available, so that ultimately it's not about the technology, we can help their business, right? We can help them do better merchandising, we can help customers understand customer churn and, and, and things like that. So it really is an opportunity for companies to change the way they do things, impact their top and bottom line. Well the cool thing that you talked about being, starting with, with the, the analytics piece, getting it in the hands of the users, is that they've had, and I hope they know this, the opportunity to influence the entire business. Yeah, right. They, they were really the early adopters, the, t the test ground for this, and, they, and it proved that it was very successful quite quickly in massively uncertain macro times. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we, um, they, and I think they see that as well. They see that they're trusted with data. So yeah, that's, this is a critical point. Yeah. Yeah. If you had a mulligan, I don't know if you golf, but if you had a do-over, what would be the one or two or three things that you would do differently? Um, I think we would have gone to maybe cloud a bit quicker, if I'm honest. I think that's probably the right answer that Brendan mm -hmm. wants to hear. Um, but the, if, if we were in a much kind of stronger position with on-premise, we had to manage the infrastructure ourselves. That took a lot of uh, manpower and everything. This click cloud kind of looks after that for us. So that's probably the, the one kind of I would think that we'd want to do um, if we did it again. So, so, so there's an interesting thing. So Brendan, you said it's, there's a cost savings. Right, and you, you get two sides of the debate. Oh, we're cheaper than the cloud on-prem, right? There's, of course, you know who you get that from, from the large on-prem vendors. <laughs> um, have you saved money going to the cloud? Yeah, absolutely. I guess there's, the, there's, the, there's more of the indirect savings you get from, the, yeah, like, like I said, a few hours of manpower. Um, there's also the, the, the infrastructure um, costs that you have. So yeah, absolutely, you would have saved money. So, so the, the cloud bill, and maybe the expense of, you know, the ongoing expense of renting versus owning, you know, might, I don't know, down the road there might be a crossover and it might be more expensive to rent. But, from a business standpoint, it's, it's, it's a better business model. Is, is that a fair way to characterize it? And it may be actually cheaper when you add up all the productivity benefits, right? So that's kind of, I'm trying to parse through the, the, the vendor rhetoric, not that, Click is part of that. You guys, you're, you're cloud guy. I get it. I can so. step away if you guys want. Yeah, no. Want, no. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> but, but so, <laughs> I'm trying to get right. So, this is an interesting equation because I, I think we probably pay more for S3 than if we went out and bought a storage device from you know some vendor. But I would never do that hmm. because it would cost me. Right? It would just be a waste of time. So I'm trying to understand how you guys think about it. I think it's in terms of, because we're quite a lean team, we don't yeah. have the luxury of having big teams that can manage the, the things ourselves. So then, it's always, like I said, those indirect benefits and, co and cost savings that we'll get. So I think that's why we, like I said, it's not just click, we're moving lots of different applications to the cloud. And, and how about the, the tooling? 
Um, Brendan mentioned, you know, get best of breed, best of breed security. You know, security's an interesting conversation, won't go there, but, but so, are you in multiple clouds? You know, kind of one cloud? How, how, what's your cloud strategy in that regard? So it's an interesting, we, um, we only have kind of one tenant at the moment which we manage for all of our restaurants. Um, we are looking to expand to our franchisees because so we're not, because um, we have around about 15 countries that have our franchise restaurants. Again, we, it's still early days where we're kind of talking about whether we go multi-tenant, whether we bring it into our, into our own. I guess these are the conversations we would need to have. Um, but I think we want to be as flexible as we can where we offer them the, the ability to have their own insight, but also kind of a bit of control centrally as well. And yeah, go ahead, please. The, the yeah, other interesting yeah. thing about your story here is that, so they're running on Click Cloud. We, we run on AWS, that's our backbone, right? That's what we do. You, you're an Azure shop for all intents and purposes where you're doing Really? Data. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's interesting. We get a lot of questions saying, oh, but we don't run on AWS. And I will cite you frequently saying, well, we have other customers who also don't run, right, run on AWS. So there's, you talked about cost savings, but there are really three things, right? Save money, that's one make money, clearly they're doing that, but also mitigating risk is another key thing. By being in those multiple clouds, and being in the cloud, you're able to mitigate some risk there. I mean, yeah. I think that's a really interesting <laughs> angle. Yeah, because there's an expected loss, if you use an insurance term, right, that you deal with. And we yeah. really haven't got into the plumbing, but since I have you here, so you're running on AWS, that's your backbone. Yeah. Are you taking advantage of sort of new silicon advancements? Yeah, so we are always looking at the, what AWS does. I mean, let's look at AWS's history and where they come from. Uh, so we're, we're always looking at that, but we're also looking at the market too, right? And we are getting inquiries from customers who say, is there ever a chance to run on Azure or GCP? And so we will continue to look at that and we'll look at uh, the best in breed and what we got on AWS right now. Right now our strategy is get really good on AWS, master that, and then look at expanding potentially to other clouds, but that's something that we're thinking about. I mean, there's definitely a, a business case for doing that from a yeah. partnership standpoint. Completely. You partner with AWS, partner with Azure, partner with Google, they're good distribution channels. Is there a, I guess there's a technical case that some, you know, maybe somebody has a, you know, maybe you love BigQuery or something, or maybe your customers do, so yep. it opens things up. But on the flip side, it does add a, a layer of complexity. You know, oh, it can add it. Could yeah. add a ton of tactical data, could add a layer of complexity, and, and frankly, having the control plane on AWS, that's really the control plane. It really gets down to is we respect where customer, customers keep their data, right? That you, yeah. You've heard that message here all day, so we're going to continue to do that. So it's, it's something we're thinking about, but it's not anything that customers are screaming, saying, you must do this tomorrow, right. we won't go with you. Right, but so it, it, just thinking ahead, the, the sort of benefits of doing that, or if you did that, you would, you would make it a common experience no matter where you went. You would abstract all that it's complexity, It's all right? about the user experience, yeah. right? Yeah. Everybody's got a cell phone. Everyone loves it, right? Super easy to use. Um, it's all about the experience. We'd never give anybody a, a different experience. It just, it's just, And that's where the hard part comes in. You got to do that, all that abstraction and make sure it performs well. That's what we call super cloud, right? When you, when I you, love the expression super cloud, when right? You shouldn't <laughs> know which cloud you're running on. It doesn't really matter. Right, that, that's the point. It's it a, doesn't it's, really it, matter. It, it, it's, a, it's not the superlative, that gets people all pissed off, but it's really the, the supra, the above, you know, the floating yeah, above. And, so. I mean, I'm, I'm from Boston, right? It's the wicked good cloud, right? <laughs> yeah, so, it's the wicked know, good cloud. There's that one as well, so <laughs> that's what I like that. I like that. Dan, what's next from a cloud journey perspective? You talked a little bit about that, but tell us kind of what's next, and what are some of the things that you're excited to hear about from Click at Click World? Tomorrow is going to be a lot of touching and feeling. We've mm. got the chief product officer coming on next. Hopefully we're going to get some teasers, but what excites you about the partnership and where it's going to be able to take Pizza Express? So I think we, the QCDI and Talon's partnership is really interesting. Um, we're actually at the, at the moment reviewing our data warehouse architecture because it's a little bit um, old fashioned now. We're looking to, to migrate to more cloud tool again. Um, as Brendan said, we are typically a Microsoft Azure shop, um, but we are, we are really keen to see how QDCI and kind of Talon can, can help us with that. Because I have a, a, a great kind of idea in my head where we'd have complete end-to-end -end click uh, uh, platform that, this, that feels really natural, so I'd love to get there if it works. Do you have Pizza G GPT? Pizza GPT, <laughs> yeah. I'll write that one down actually. It's a good idea, yeah. It'd be amazing. Maybe we're in the wrong industry, right? That's know, not a yeah. bad idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you know, you got a lot of consumer data, right? So yeah. I mean, yeah, that's no, true. Yeah, I think um, 
It would be great. I know there's been talked about chat GPT and how that could be embedded into, into Click as well. So yeah, we'd love to see that more. And, we, and I know there's already the um, natural kind of language processing yep. within Click, the Insight Advisor, which we have, haven't really done enough with. You will have to come to the keynote tomorrow. Fantastic, okay. You have to come to the keynote tomorrow. Yeah, tell us, can you, what can you tell us about yeah. the keynote tomorrow? Like, Give us a little teaser. Neither confirm nor deny anything. There's <laughs> a keynote tomorrow, and those of you that, you should tune in online, right? You can watch it, you can watch it online. Oh, Mike was very clear this morning, like people, be careful what, what you're doing tonight, because you need to be you here need tomorrow. To be there to see. Oh, yeah. There's going to be some really, uh, James, who's coming on, I'm pointing over there, because he's about to come on. He'll have a great story for you tomorrow. He'll have a good story here, so. I think there's a real opportunity to get some uh, good insights of what, where we're headed and what, what's going to happen You'll next. You'll have a day two product day, you yeah. get to see some, some new yeah. stuff. Yeah, so. absolutely. Show and tell. Last question for you, what's, what can you tell us about what's next for Click Cloud in terms of innovation, helping customers in every industry really become data companies? You nailed it on every industry, so that's really the key. So as we look at our journey over the past three years, um, regulated industries have been a bit of a challenge for us, right? It's, Customers have been reticent to move their data into the cloud. Over the past year, we've become FedRAMP certified. That's a massively strong story for us. So we're able to help those federal customers. Um, we're looking at state ramp, helping some of those state and local customers in North America, so we really focus in there. Um, we also just got HIPAA compliant. So nice. we can go after the healthcare industry, so yeah. we're focusing. We are going to continue to invest, especially around compliance and certifications, because protecting our customers' data is absolutely critical. So you can see some continued investment there from a technology perspective, as well as a compliance perspective. And then, obviously, we're looking at the trends in the market, right? We're listening to what our customers say. We're listening to what our prospects say. We're listening to what the market says. And there are some things that are in the augmented analytics, artificial intelligence space, that we have to be thinking about. Right, so you can expect to see some of those things in the future on our cloud. We've got our AutoML that was just released last year. So that's our, that's our first step in that direction. It's exciting, it's yeah. really fun to see this thing grow and it's great to help people like People Express. Yeah. Pizza, Pizza Express, Pizza sorry Express. about that. And People Express too. And People Express <laughs> is great too. <laughs> well, we, we will keep our eye on this space for sure. Brendan, Dan, thank you so much for joining Dave and me on the program. Yeah. Great story, keep up the great work. Thank, thank you very much. And who knew data is the secret sauce of Pizza Express? You thought there was some in the sauce? It's data. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. Great, thank you. Thanks. For our guests and for Dave Vellante, this is Lisa Martin coming to you live from the Mandalay Bay in Vegas, baby. CUBE coverage <laughs> of ClickWorld 23 continues next. <laughs>